Hi everyone, and I've been helping a viewer of my channel with one of their models that they've actually just been spending the week on. They've created this digger arm, and they created the individual components of the digger arm and need some help animating it. Now we've already hit a few problems with certain techniques that have been described that only work in 2.5D space. Um, but we're going to actually be using the A2 Plus Workbench to actually animate this. And as you can see, we can move the digger arm and we can actually move the bucket itself as well for the angle. So we can move that up and down. And this allows us to place some code on here to allow us to. Um, animate this with Python if we so desire but I will also be using at the moment this A2 plus workbench is for FreeCAD 0.18 but we've also got the assembly 4 workbench which can be used with FreeCAD 0.19 you can't use the assembly 4 with FreeCAD 0.18 because I've tried and it will basically you get halfway through and you'll crash out I won't be going into assembly 2 because that's for old versions and no longer supported. But it's a good way of animating. So this I think there's going to be over three videos almost. So I'm going to release two videos where I go through and look at this and to see where we can actually add improvements, especially when someone's just coming out from a week, which is pretty impressive for a week's work. Um, and he's just made this from tutorials from the web, my channel, etc. And we'll look at this and we'll look at what, how it's been created and it'll give you a feel of actually how to take a model that you haven't seen before and actually look through and get an idea of how it's been created and fix any issues in there. And just to really to be able to read models um, that people have sent you and uh, it's easy to actually create your own model and actually know where all the parts fit but when you get something you they haven't seen before that's been sent to you you have to actually s spend a few minutes or even half an hour just to actually look through the model see how it's created and understand the internal workings okay so let's get to it so the first thing i do is to see the wood for the trees so we can actually remove the bucket and the forearm just by making them invisible clicking on them and pressing space will make them invisible and we can work on the boom arm so at the moment if I right click transform that you can see the center of origin is there now if we move down the processes on the actual object itself we can see our last process was chamfer if I click on the fillet, press space, the chamfer will be removed, but our fillet will be displayed. So we can actually work our way back and see what processes have been actually applied to this. So if I click on the pocket, press space, you can actually see the fillet is no longer invisible. We'll just see the actual pocket there. If I click on the pad, press space, you can see the shape that's been pad. If I enter the pad, click on the sketch, press the space, you can see the actual padding has been done in two dimensions on that sketch. So the sketch is what we want to have a look at. So we double click the sketch and you can see the sketch is there. Just zoom in, just move into position and we can actually see how mobile this sketch is just by moving it. You can see our center of origin would be here. So this is our pivot point, and we want it here. So I've just moved this, let's go over to the model, and you can see things have broken in here. And what I'm going to do is just work my way backwards, so we can see the chamfer, so we can see that's broken. The fillet is fine, so something's happened between the fillet and the chamfer. So let's have a look at our pocket. Well, our pocket's no longer there before it was here so something's happened in the pocket so let's have a look at this top cut elbow joint our sketch we can see that's actually was over here before and now it's moved so if I do a couple of 
control Z you can see that's that's there so the actual process of moving this sketch will actually break the position of the pocket now there's two reasons for that it's because as you move this up we actually got this sketch on a different axis and probably because it's not mapped to this sketch as well so you can see the top cup elbow joint is here we can actually move that now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on our sketch and just move this into position first to do that we need to delete these locks so that's locked into position this is now free we can move this into position zoom in and where we want the point to pivot let's just move this constraint out of the way so these two we can actually constrain those together so that's now constrained to the point of origin I'll take one of these lines and put a lock constraint on there we've actually locked this down so this has gone green so this is a fully constrained sketch so this is the importance of having a fully constrained sketch because if when you have sketches on other axes they may become detached so that's one done so now we need to move this sketch let's click on the sketch You can see the map mode is flat face. Now it's important to have the pad displaying for this so we can actually map this to here. So click on the sketch. We're in the part design. Map mode is flat face at the moment, so let's go into here. And we can see nothing has been referenced. So click the reference one so it's got selected. And I'm just going to select this face here. So you can actually see it's selected on the pad face. We'll OK that. And then we'll move this sketch into position. So let's double click on it. Zoom in. And what I'm going to do is just move this into position. We've got a lock here. So let's delete that. So that's now free. And we can move that into our position there. We can go back and have a look at the pocket to see if it's actually applied. So we can actually move it into position. Have a look, see what it's done. We've got a bit of a part there that we need to remove. Let's just move it back over. And there we go. So that's all all nicely done. So Please for that. So that's that's good. That's there. So we've now fixed that point, and we can see everything else. Let's close the sketch and make sure everything else has now come out of error, and we've got a proper positioned, and there's no errors on this sketch. So if we go and change the position of this now transform you can see our transform is now right through that hole right in the center of that hole which is where we want it let's ok that let's save what we've done control s to save and now what I'm going to do is hide the boom arm move on to the forearm so our point of rotation should be here at the moment we've got our point of rotation go to right click and transform on the body is way over here so we need to move that to that point there so we do the same so we come into the forearm open it up and we work our way backwards just to have a look to see what's what's happening so the green point and the Part that's been made visible there is our last 
process in this queue. So we click on the fill it at joint, see what that's done. Click on the pocket. see that's here click on the pad so that's all good so we've probably got the same problems here with this pocket maybe let's have a look so we've got flat face there and it's that is that one's actually mapped so we're okay there cancel out of there so that's good so let's go on to our sketch, make that visible. Double click on it and let's move this sketch. So it's unconstrained at the moment, so there'll be movement in here. So let's move, and you can see that hole already moved, so that's Control Z that. Let's have a look at that hole. So that's mo that hole is mobile at the moment. What I'm going to do is take these two, these two holes, make those equal so they're the equal size. They're still mobile at the moment, but we'd, that size isn't actually moving. Let's control Z that. And I'm going to make those to have a distance between them. that now hopefully that should have locked it down so that's locked it into position okay so I'm just gonna move that slightly go to the model and see if, if anything's broken so our fillet has broken there and that is because if I just hit space on there we can have a look and see what's going on. And that's because our sketch has moved. So we've got to fill it here. We've got a sketch over here, which is on that side. that's actually moved that's actually moved position so control Z that come back you can see where it's moved it's moved over the side that actually fooled me then because I thought there was a, a chunk taken out there but it hasn't so so that's actually moving so we need to, to deal with that once we have positioned it so let's go back to our sketch Make sure that's visible That's there at the moment. So let's close that and go back to our pad sketch. And what we'll do is move that into position. And we'll place those points together, constrain them. And I'm going to bring this up and make that there the horizontal constraint in there, so that's all constrained now. So it's constrained to that center point. So that's constrained to that center point there, center of origin. That's good. So that's done for that part. Now we need to fix the problems with our broken fillet here. So this is what it looked like before. So you can see what it looked like before. Show the pad. Show the sketch in the pocket. And that's moved. 
so we need to move that back into position. Double click the sketch. We know it's mapped to the surface. So look at our what we have. Go back and look at the fillet. So I'm just going to roughly move that back into position for the time being. Pad back up. We've got a size here. I'm going to bring this down to minus 10. Actually, I can bring this down to zero. If we look down our tree, we can see everything seems to have now resolved. So that's back into position. You can actually compare what we had before with what we've got now and find out what the actual uh, correct position of that is. Um, basically looking at how far over we actually want this. But I'm going to leave that to the original designer of this model to allow him to do that because I didn't actually take reference of actually how far over that was. So that's good, that's that one done. So we should now have, if I come out of the sketch and have a look at what we got, bring the fillet back, hide the sketches. Using the spacebar to hide the sketches. So now, if I right click on the forearm, transform, you can see our center is there. So when this moves, it will move around that hole there. Okay. And see it's coming through that hole. Okay, that, and that's going to have a look at the bucket. The bucket itself is a lot more complex, and we're going to have a look at that in another video. And what we'll do is we'll have a look at the bucket, how it's been constructed, fix any issues, and then we'll move over to the A2 Plus workbench and learn how to constrain this bucket against the forearm and the boom arm and actually start moving the bucket and arm as one to create an animation. If you like what you're seeing please subscribe to my site and also I have a Ko-Fi site um, where you can actually donate a few pence or a few pounds, dollars or whatever your currency is and that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0 and there you'll be able to help me fund my site and all the money that I actually get from any funds will actually get pushed back into the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. I'll see you next time.